Hey, what's up? It's Stanislaw with Motion VFX, and this tutorial is all about using the new M Title Cyberpunk Pack. Once you have it installed, you can find the title templates inside the Title Templates tab of Final Cut Pro 10, then click on M Title Cyberpunk. There's 25 different customizable title templates included, but there's also a whole lot more in terms of add-ons, transitions, and overlay effects. You can preview any of the templates inside your browser by just hovering your cursor right over it. And whenever you find one that you like, just click and drag it right into your timeline to use it. That's a great looking template, but let's talk about how we can modify this a little bit. Inside our viewer, we can use the on-screen controls to change the position, scale, or rotation. To change the text, just click right on the text inside the viewer and change out the characters. One of the great things about Final Cut is if I need to retime any of these templates, I can just drag the edge and it doesn't mess up any of the animation. It just works. Chances are likely you're going to want to change more than just the text. So to make deeper changes to our templates, we'll need to use the inspector. Inside the inspector are all the controls for that template. At the very top are our animation in and out. And I get a lot of questions about this. If you've noticed, all our templates will animate in and out by default. But if I uncheck either of these toggle boxes, it will disable that animation, meaning that it won't animate in smoothly, it'll just come to an abrupt end or stop, which is great if you wanted to have some looping graphics. Below are the same controls as our on-screen controls, containing the position, scale, and rotation. Underneath that, we have controls for the individual text and the different text properties of that title template. If you end up using a lot of different templates in your work, I really recommend using the inspector to change out some of the text. You just have a lot more power inside the inspector in terms of changing out the text, spacing, and font formats. A lot of the different templates will have different sections that you can change the color, and you do that by just selecting the color well and choosing a new color. If you've seen the different tutorials I've put together for Motion VFX, something that I always mention is to explore all the different template options as each template usually has its own set of unique controls that are only available for that one particular template. This is great because it gives you a lot more flexibility by being able to mix and match elements of different templates to create something totally new. It's really easy to try out different styles and experiment with different looks. I really like this template because it has this nice ghost in the shell, standalone complex feel to it. And it's got a drop zone. And if you're new to drop zones, what they are are placeholders for you to put in your own content. So in this case, I'll put in our logo here. Now that doesn't look quite right. So we'll use the drop zone controls to scale this and place that right in the center. Now I'll customize the rest of my template by changing out my text and the color. Now that we understand how these work, let's take a look at the transitions included. So I'll click on M Title Cyberpunk and hover over them to preview them. And to use them, just drag them in between any two clips. If I want to replace one, I'll just drag a new one and place it right on top. Now all of the different transitions also have inspector controls. This gives you unlimited variety, meaning that you can create a unique transition that is just your look, separating you from pretty much everyone else that just uses the stock setting. And I think I'm going to use two of them back to back right here. Yeah, that one looks great. We're gonna modify this just slightly and we'll move on to the next one and I'll modify that one too. So I'm gonna click on that one, open that control and then use the control panel to just change it up a little bit. To close the transition tab, use the shortcut key control command five. Let's take a look at some of the overlay effects. 
Overlay effects can be used on titles or any kinds of footage. I'm using the colorization one here and you can see it on and off by disabling it with the V key. By using the hue value, I'm gonna bump this up quite a bit and playing with the prism, we can kind of separate out those RGB channels. Let's go ahead and add a whole bunch of additional templates to this. And what the glowing edges does is it does this wipe back and forth of the highlight passes of the image. And I'm gonna go inside the inspector and we're gonna change out those colors on something a little cooler. I'm gonna adjust the mask settings of this. Effectively, that mask is what is creating this effect. It has an oscillation control at the very bottom. So right down here, I'm gonna change this to something a bit slower and let's play this back. And now you can see this bouncing back and forth. That's moving just a little too fast still. So I'm gonna change that, I think to something maybe around five. And that should be slow enough to give this really nice slow movement. Next, I'll add a digital distortion effect. This effect creates almost like the tracking distortion you would get from an old VCR. There's so much to just the overlay effects, these could probably be their own separate packs. Let's stack this blur and I'll use the on-screen control just to frame up our center. And I'll finish this section off with an add-on and I'll use this for the log line for this short film that I'm producing here. Hey, I'm really happy with that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a compound clip out of this whole thing. A shortcut for that would be Alt G. I'll go ahead and name that glow. And there's a few benefits to that. It collapses my timeline. If I place a transition on this, now it affects everything inside that clip at once. Let's continue building this out and make this a little bit more interesting with this lens distortion. And the lens distortion is a great start. Let's make this a little bit more interesting though with a title. Playing this through, I can see that it's gonna be a little too dark for me and I'm gonna make some changes. First, I'm gonna change out my text. And the reason why I do this is I wanna see if the text and title that I'm using is going to work right with this particular template. Next, I'm going to adjust the placement of the different items using the inspector controls. I can adjust the color of them by clicking on that color well. And I'm gonna turn off some of the extra glitch and distortions for this and just size this up. This title has some streak settings near the very bottom that I'm going to adjust and I'm going to affect the background to give it a little bit of clarity and some color back. Next, I'll use the transmission effect and I'm gonna place this right in between these other two clips. And inside the inspector control, I'm gonna turn down the colorization, again, giving us this kind of washed out viewfinder look. Using another add-on, I'm just gonna use this as a part of a design feature. So put this right in the top left corner and then place another one in the bottom right corner. That particular one has a bit of a time code effect to it. Looking through the rest of the overlays, I think I'll add just one more of this off-screen light and we're gonna use this to kind of tie together these first two shots. So as that fades in, we've got this heavy color coming in from the side and I'll finish it with a letterbox. So that should give you a quick breakdown on some different ways that you can use the M-Title Cyberpunk Pack. Again, my name is Stanislaw with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.